Okay, thank you. Okay, so again, um, let's start off so that we don't uh, take up too much of everyone's time. Good morning, uh, and thank you everyone for attending our Take Your Reporting and Budgeting to the Next Level webinar. So this webinar is something that we've worked very closely with our, uh, our principal partner here, Solver. And uh, I'm just going to go to the next slide, a little technical information before we jump in. And uh, by now, I believe everyone should have this information already. So just to repeat, if you're having audio issues connecting through the web, uh, please feel free to use the toll-free number to dial in and uh, the access code that's uh, provided in, uh, in the email as well. Okay, so to move forward, a quick introduction. For this webinar session, as I, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, we've titled it Take Your Reporting and Budgeting to the Next Level. Um, two main presenters here, myself, uh, Davinder from uh, TFP SD1 Solutions, and we've got uh, Mike from Solver Asia Pacific. Mike obviously has a better photo than I do, but uh, for now, we'll just move with that. Now, to give you a little bit more overview, it's a joint webinar that uh, Solver and SD1 has actually worked on. And what we want to do is we want to address reporting. We want to look at actionable insights and planning and budgeting. And we're going to try to achieve all of this via the Solver BI360 suite. So main point here is to look at actionable insights, making sense of all that data that you have into uh, a reporting um, logic. So it's got a wide coverage. You can look at ERP users, including SAP Business One users, and it's also targeted to non-ERP users. So if you have any application, like a CRM, a human resource, payroll, et cetera, and if that's in a database format, then we can actually use the BI360 suite in order to um, get that data out. So our solution focus, uh, we've, we've said this a couple of times, our solution focus for today will be the BI360 Business Intelligence Suite. Okay. Um, most of the attendees, if not all, are currently our SAP Business One customers. So we'll just quickly run through this slide. TFP Solutions and SB1 Solutions established in 2006. We're a certified SAP partner, value-added reseller. And what we focus on mainly is the SAP Business One consultancy and business rollout within Malaysia. So what we want to do is that we want to leverage on-premise, cloud, and uh, of course, we've got some additional add-ons like the Viratech project. We've done integration to third-party solutions. And today, we will be showcasing um, the BI portion, and in this case, the solver solution for uh, BI360. And to give you a little bit of background in terms of uh, our principal tier, which is Solver. So Solver, award-winning global service provider of corporate performance management, CPM software. Um, and normally BI, business intelligence, is a subset of that CPM. Solver has over 20 years uh, in the BI industry, budgeting, reporting, data warehousing as well. And one thing here that I've highlighted in yellow to take note to the SAP Business One users today, um, Solver actually developed the Excel reporter solution, which was then licensed to SAP uh, for use. So the DNA that Solver has is very much embedded within reporting and also embedded within SAP Business One. But this solution, uh, to stress again, this solution actually works with almost any other ERP that you may have, as well as non-ERP solutions. Solver has also been mentioned within the Gartner Magic Quadrant for three years running, and they have about 2,000 plus customers in the US, Canada, in uh, Europe, the Middle East, Africa, Latin America, and Asia Pacific. And Asia Pacific is where Mike is currently based out of. A quick snapshot on SAP Business One, and I thought we'll just include this very briefly uh, in case there are attendees who may not be very familiar with the Business One solution. 
So this is just an FYI on uh, the backend ERP that some of, uh, of our customers are already running today. Now, moving forward for today's session, I think the key item to look at is what we would term as the reporting gap. So you have SAP Business One, you have your ERP solution, and traditionally with your ERP, with your software solution, we're going to have some sort of gaps that may arise for reporting. Now, one of the biggest challenge that, that a lot of people face is actually finance-based reporting. And in that finance-based reporting, in reports such as trial balance, profit and loss, balance sheets, these reports require quite a bit of formula building and programming in order to build into what we commonly call a finance report, like a trial balance, a profit and loss, and a balance sheet. In most cases as well, what we need to do is that we need to have data expand in a columnar manner, for example, by division, by line of business, or by accounting period. And if you use a traditional formatted reporting tool, you may not be able to achieve this easily. In addition to that, some formatted reporting tools, um, as an example is Crystal Reports, uh, without realizing it, you inadvertently you limit yourself to a paper size, which is about A4. And if you try to squeeze in additional information, because your business is growing, it's very organic, um, those additional rows and columns will then start to expand and overflow your A4 paper. If you move to Excel, of course, Excel's got uh, a number of columns and rows that you can actually limit and sort. In uh, in addition to what we've just mentioned for Excel, uh, if you have fixed reports, formulas and relationships cannot be edited. Once you generate a report, it's outputted onto your screen, it's generated as a PDF or uh, a file, and you will not be able to actually interact with that data, interact with that report. And in most cases, we would like to look at what if scenarios, you know, what if revenue goes up by 10%, what if expenses goes down by 15%, and we want to look at the impact to that report that has been generated. So formatted reporting tools will probably not allow you to do this. Time measures will have to be manually developed or written. And what I mean by time measures are concepts, for example, period to date, year to date, current period, last year, etc. And usually what will happen is that we'll have to build this as a query, build this as a formula, and we'll have to embed it into every single report. Now this can be somewhat tedious if you're building 10 somewhat similar reports and you need to have the same time measure, you'll have to write that query or that formula over and over again. And I think one of the main challenges when it comes to doing reporting is that you will probably have certain reports that are running off values or data that's not in your current system. It's not in your ERP, it's not in your CRM, it's not in your uh, HR system. Example, and, it, and this is a real world example. For example, you've got your sales team's targets and you wanna key in your sales team's sales targets and you wanna run it off actual invoicing from the company. So you may keep your sales team targets for monthly figures, quarterly figures in Excel, and the actual uh, sales revenue coming in from the financial reports. So if you want to match this up and have it in a form of like a column comparison, it will not be something that you can do easily. And if you have multiple sets of data and you want to have one picture of the whole truth, it's going to be a bit more technical to do that if you need to consolidate. So consolidate here, which um, I believe myself and Mike will be actually covering um, a little bit more as we move forward. Consolidate here will also cover concepts like elimination and uh, intercompany transactions that you need to actually also take out. So now we've put up a couple of gaps. Now these may be gaps that uh, we feel are relevant. And if you do have some additional questions, please free feel free to uh, put it into the chat, and we'll probably add it to the reporting gap list as well. So how, how do we look at addressing these gaps? And we would like to address these gaps using the BI360 suite. So we've got, obviously, the business intelligence BI360. It's a full reporting, planning and budgeting, dashboard, and data warehouse. 
and it's designed for users. So here again, we stress that it's designed for business users and it's not targeting an IT user. It's actually targeting your everyday finance manager, sales manager, inventory purchasing person. So they can actually look at those columns and values in uh, what we would say simple English, and they can actually transact and run reports as well. Now the BI 360 uh, suite comes in modular format and you can actually buy it in, uh, in modules and you can actually mix and match. Um, and we'll, we'll go into this a little bit more deeper as we progress. Now it's mainly Excel and web-based. So everyone else who's very comfortable with Excel, uh, it's something that we cannot run away from, spreadsheets. So if you have this basic spreadsheet understanding, you will be able to very easily pick up the BI360 suite and um, address your reporting requirements. Lastly, there are a number of pre-built, pre-configured components within the BI360. So this makes it a little bit easier for you to run your reports. So if you connect it, for example, to your backend, in this case, let's say backend is SAP Business One, or your backend is a CRM solution or, or a HR solution. Now those pre-configured values will show up and it will allow you to interact with your data. Now, there is, there is a small caveat here. Of course, we will have to look at what kind of data that you have as well and the bridge that is available from Solver for the BI360 tool to work on. But uh, we can always take this up one-on-one um, -on -one if need be. Okay, now, moving forward, let's have a quick look, a quick snapshot on the product solution. Now we have the main core, which is the BI360 uh, reporting tool. And this BI360 reporting tool, it's Excel-based, it's web-based as well. It's drag and drop, so everyone else can actually make use of it quite easily. You can run reports on demand, and depending on how you build reports, you can actually drill down into your data and look at transactional information as well. It comes with an additional ad hoc query user. The, the tool is called the BI360 Composer. And uh, we may have a very special offer for you as we progress for the BI360 Composer, but I'll leave that for a little later today. You can automate your reports and more importantly, out of the box integration to major ERP systems. So primarily, most of the time, we will be looking at the first column, which is the BI360 reporting. Next, we have the BI360 planning solution. Yeah, and again, it is an Excel-based system. You've got ability to add in your comments, add in your details, um, spread out certain planning data or budget figure. You can also do forecasting if you need to. And I think something that, uh, that's also important here, which is the ability to actually do workflow and approvals. So if I create a planning document for my sales team in terms of sales targets and the sales team members fill up those sales targets, I can actually approve the values that they have actually input into the system before it gets uh, absorbed and then run against reporting. So the planning and the budgeting tool is actually quite exciting as well. Then we have the BI360 data warehouse. Um, there's quite a number of bullets here, but to simplify, this will be where we import and store multiple sets of data from different companies. And from there, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna create additional information, for example, currency conversions, consolidations, eliminations. We can create additional tree. For example, we wanna create a line of business per company, per subsidiary, or per division, so that those trees or those values can then be reported on and it will be the standard report that's available to all users. So to think about it, the, the BI360 data warehouse will be um, something that you will be looking at if you have multiple sources of data. It's not just limited to SAP Business One, meaning to say you've got five or six SAP Business One companies, but depending on that level of integration, we can also look at um, bringing in your point of sales data, bringing in your CRM data, your HR data as well, and then putting it within the data warehouse to make meaningful and insightful information out of it. 
And of course, we also have the BI360 dashboard. So dashboard speaks for itself. It's our web-based interactive gauge charts, etc. It allows you to run somewhat similar reports from the BI360, the first column, but it allows you to access these reports from the web. So if there's a need for people to run your own reports, to execute those information outside of SAP Business One through the internet, then the BI360 dashboard tool um, will come in, in handy. Okay, so that's what I wanted to do was I just wanted to set the stage in terms of uh, our webinar today. And uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to pass um, the session back to Mike. And uh, Mike will start off with, uh, with a short presentation, I guess, on BR360 a little bit, and then a solution demo. So Mike, do you want to take over? All right, thanks a lot, Damner. Appreciate it. Uh, can you see my screen? Um, I can, yes, okay. and I will be monitoring chat as well. Okay, great. So what you're looking at is a... Um, is the BI360 architecture. It's an overview of, um, it's not, a, it's not a indicative of our entire products, but it's really an overview of the major components that we'll be uh, showing and addressing today. <clears throat> um, Davner, could I ask, can you, um, can you mute your line as well? I'm getting some feedback. All right, I'll, I'll just mute myself as well. Okay, thanks. So this, this is not indicative of the entire BI360 product offering. Um, it's just the major components that we'll be focusing on today. So everything really starts with uh, reporting, the report writing. And as Davinder pointed out, this is an Excel add-in. So the first thing that I can get you to kind of wrap your mind around, whether we're talking about reporting or we're talking about budgeting or forecasting, is that at no point in time do we ever store any data inside of Excel. OK, so we need to either pull data from a data source or push data to a data source. So I'll talk a little bit about that. And here you can see that um, there's a dotted line going from our reporting tool. And that's going into the business one SAP Business One application ERP. Um, and what that dotted line indicates is that it's a live integration. So I can access live. I mean, you post a transaction inside of B1. I can access that information instantaneously um, across the entire system. So if you're, we're not just talking about general ledger, we're talking about sub-ledger detail across any module. So any detail that you have on any of the modules that come with B1, we can access that data. If for some reason you have a, let's say a third party product or you have customizations inside of B1 and you'd like the ability to access those fields for the purpose of reporting, no problem. We have, um, uh, integration tool that comes with our report writing product, so that's available for you to add those fields. So you get it, right? We can get to everything across your SAP Business One ERP solution, but now the question for a lot of you might be, well, that's great, but what about the rest of our organization? And I've put some examples here. These are just examples of which there are many, but maybe you've got an external HR or payroll system or external CRM or really any type of data and some other examples, maybe you're in retail or hospitality, you've got POS data or any type of vertical system or proprietary system where you'd like to add the data along with your ERP data for the purpose of reporting. So how do you do that? And the way that BI360 does that is we introduce the BI360 pre-built data warehouse. So I'm sure a lot of you on the call today are, are thinking data warehouse, you've got this vision of this big silo and a whole lot of IT people lined up. And I wanna assure you that that's not the case at all. BI360 is designed to be a self-service suite uh, across the board, um, specifically for people in finance and operations. So the BI360 data warehouse is, yes, it is a, a silo to store data, but it's a whole lot more. And as Davner alluded to earlier, this is where our, our data warehouse, uh, where the product handles consult, things like consolidations. So if you're doing um, auto eliminations or you want to do manual adjustments, um, because we're a budgeting and forecasting solution, you can build templates that will write back. So adjustments are a perfect example of that. So um, we have rules to be able to go in and do all the auto eliminations. We can manage um, any minority interest. We also have a full currency engine, so if you 
are operating in multiple currencies, you can capture as many currencies as you want at whatever frequency that you want. Um, you can use an FX service or you can create a template and enter those, um, those exchange rates in manually. The last thing, which, which is very important, is trees. <clears throat> so the BI360 product uh, comes with, <clears throat> excuse me, comes with an unlimited number of hierarchical um, tree structures. So you can build trees on things like company structures, maybe it's by location or geography, maybe it's by the line of business manufacturing versus distribution, maybe you want to build on a project or products or really anything where you can think of having um, a hierarchical tree structure, you can build those trees with inside of BI360. And I'm going to show you an example of that when I, when I get into the reporting side. So <clears throat> essentially what you've done is you've taken all of your SAP Business One data, along with all of that data across your enterprise, and you've consolidated it all inside of your data warehouse. And you'll notice that the BI360 reporting tool is also integrated to the data warehouse out of the box as well. So essentially I can run a live report off of B1 or switch two seconds later and run a report off my data warehouse. Now I don't need to go and switch anything. When I build the report, the report knows what the data source is. Okay, um, so I'll show you examples of that. I'm going to show you my first report will be a B1 live report, and then I'm going to switch into the data warehouse. Okay, so the next step in this process is budgeting. I am going to show you one template today. We've got a lot to show and a very little amount of time to do it <clears throat> to show you. So I'm going to show you one budget template just to give you a, a flavor of how the, the budgeting solution works. But essentially, whenever I'm talking about reporting, I'm also talking about budgeting. They're really one in the same. The difference is, is that reporting only pulls data, right? Where budgeting will pull data, you'll allow you to add data, manipulate data, and then you need to store that data back. And where do you store that data? You store that data, an unlimited number of budget or forecast versions, all within inside the data warehouse, okay? So now you start to see how central this becomes. It's got all of the data across your organization. You've got an unlimited number of budget and forecasts, and it's all immediately available for reporting. So if I'm in a P&L, for example, and I say, well, I'm going to do my actual versus budget and the variance, and hey, I'd like to look at budget version number 12. It's coming from the data warehouse, you know, went through that, that process from contribution to approval <clears throat> into the data warehouse, <clears throat> excuse me, and it's now available for reporting for end users on the fly to be able to adjust that budget version, and I will show you that as well. So both, important to note, both of these products are available via Excel as well as via the web. I am going to show you um, both flavors. Uh, dashboards, we're not going to have enough time to get into this day you, uh, today, but you will see them as I kind of um, get into the web portal. This is a web-based product only. Um, the advantage here of our dashboards is they're very easy to use, very easy to build, and they're also live with B1 out of the box and integrated to our BI360 data warehouse. Last point, just in case any of you are using Power BI or SAP Lumera and you wonder, well, how does that play with the BI360 solution? Well, both of these solutions are advanced analytics. And what I like to point out is when you're using an advanced analytics tool, it needs one thing, it needs a data source. And no better data source than our BI360 pre-built data warehouse that contains all the data across your enterprise. Now you can do ad hoc query, which I'll show you. It's not on this architecture, but we have an uh, ad hoc query tool. I'm going to show you that today. You can do formatted reporting in Excel or the web. You can do budgeting and forecasting, dashboards, and advanced analytics all off the data across your enterprise. That's essentially BI360. Okay, with that, <clears throat> I'm going to just close that down, and I will start with the first report and I've tried to maximize my environment so that everybody can see this see this because um, you know, go to meeting tends to shrink it down a little bit so I might I might play with it a little bit just to make sure that the report is fully across the screen so here you you don't see the full report <clears throat> but what you're looking at is a finished formatted report and if I collapse this and just scroll down, you'll see that there's no data inside of this report, right? And it's not gonna have any data until I tell it what to get. The graphs aren't populated. So from an end user perspective, um, that which is kind of what we're focusing on now. So you see that I have design tab and I have the run tab, but from the end user perspective, I have the ability to change these parameters. 
If I was an end user, I wouldn't have the design tab, right? So we'll get to design in a minute, but right now I have the ability, the flexibility to change these tabs and you'll, these parameters, excuse me, and you'll also notice that I'm in OEC Computers. That's the sample company for SAP Business One, which tells you I'm running a live integration into B1. So if I wanted to, as a user, to go and change the, the period, and I'll expand these a little bit so you can see them, <clears throat> I could just go in here and say, what period do I want to run this for, right? It, it, it really doesn't matter. I can, I can do that quickly on the fly, and then I can also change the budget. Uh, which budget that I want to be um, pulling. And this is assuming that my budgets are, we're not talking about BI 360 budgeting right now. We're talking about any budgets that you might have with inside of B1. So then I simply just say run, and it's going to instantaneously bring back the, this report, the results from B1. Um, and there you go. Five seconds later, I have the full report. So I am going to shrink this down just so that everybody can see the report. So now everyone should see the full landscape of this report, but it, it's, it's a report that's very indicative of what you're going to find inside of Excel, right? I have graphs, I have expansion groups, so if I want to expand or collapse that graph, I have conditional formatting with traffic lights, I could do in-cell graphs if I want, very much what you're going to find inside of Excel. And here's the thing. I love to tell people this is if you look at this report or you look at any of the, the reports I'm going to show you today are budget templates and you don't like the way that if they look, no problem, change it, right? Essentially what BI 360 does is it puts all of your data inside of Excel for you to build these reports. So really it's about querying the data. How you do the design and formatting is completely up to you. That's all Excel, right? <clears throat> and I'll talk more about that in a second. So within this report, I can drill into things. So if I said I want to see what makes up this $40,000 in revenue here, I can simply right click and you'll see that I have two drill downs. One is to drill to the journal transaction and the other is to drill to a pivot table. And I can just go right into the journal transaction. And with most sample data, you don't get a whole lot of data, but there's one transaction and I can see the information <clears throat> that makes up that transaction. If I just scroll over to the right here. And if I wanted to, I could make this second, this second tab um, be more appealing from a design perspective, but I really don't care too much about that. I just care about the raw data. And then I can pop right back into the report and go through the remainder of the report. So quite easy. And by the way, <clears throat> that was just one drill down. So let me, let me go back into reporting here and open up my designer. So it's important to point out that these parameters, filters, um, are very much like the drill downs. They're definable by the person that builds the report. So the person that built this report determines what parameters I can filter or change, and then how much I can drill down. I could actually drill down from this document, provided it was put into this report, all the way back to the source document. Or so in this report, if I'm looking at these sales, I could drill back, and let's say I'm looking at operating expenses, I can drill all the way back and look at a vendor invoice. And I don't need to have an SAP B1 user to do that. So quite powerful from the perspective of parameters and drill downs. <clears throat> the next question might be, that's great. So how do you design these reports? Are they difficult? Are you, can I do it? You know, those types of questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just close my layout editor. So now I've switched really into the design mode, right? So what you see here are all of the modules that come with the sample company for B1. I'm out of the box and I have once I installed the BI 360 tool because it's integrated out of the box all of this information and all of the data related to these modules is now available for me to create reports that's really the power of BI 360 so I'm in the financial module if I just scroll this down a little bit and I expand up journal transactions and let me just shrink this down so you have a little more real estate in the design side so you're gonna bring in the natural account well if I go into my account code Right, and I look, I see natural account. All I did was just drag natural account into cell C22, right? And then I want the natural account name. Well, if I want the natural account name, I could just expand natural account. And if I scroll down here a little bit, you will see the natural account name. So I just drag the, drag the natural account name in. It's an attribute of natural account, right? So then from there, right, so I've got my account in. As soon as my account's in, I can filter the accounts. I can create roll-ups or I can just filter the individual accounts. I can use ranges 
show me you know 1,000 to 5,000. Anything I add into my chart of accounts with B1 will automatically be included unless I go back and exclude it because I've selected that range. So very, <clears throat> very important if you don't want to forget when you add accounts that they're included in your financial reporting. So you get it. Now, now maybe I want to go in and add parameters, excuse me, add, um, add some period information, parameters, periods, you know what I meant. So <clears throat> here you'll notice that I have month to date. And if I scroll over to the side here, I have year to date. Well, all I did was pull in year to date and then I drug it across each of these columns. And now it's filtering this information by year to date. So for me to go through and, and build this report, let me just talk to you about how I do it. I, I filter the accounts, I get one row done, and then I say, copy this row, I come down a few rows later, I paste it and I select different accounts. In this case, I'm selecting my cost of good accounts. I come down a few more rows later, I paste it. <clears throat> select the appropriate accounts for operating expenses. My point is, I can filter the data for this report right here in less than five minutes. Right. So you're saying, OK, well, what takes all the time? And, you know, because it takes a lot longer than that to build the report. But filtering the data that I want is very quick. What takes all the time is me going in, <clears throat> me going in and building these graphs and then doing all the, the formatting and stuff that I already know and love about Excel. Right. There's the, we, we don't lose any of the feature and functionality that, that's associated with Excel. OK. So that's kind of reporting um, 101 with BI 360. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of other examples. Just fly through some examples just so you can see some of the type of stuff that we do. And I'm going to show you a report off the data warehouse. And notice I selected the report. It automatically knows it's off the data warehouse. I didn't have to check anything. I just went and selected the Excel file from a folder. And I can just go ahead and run this report. So <clears throat> one thing to note about this report if you're a, a company that has multiple companies, what you're seeing now is the first first attempt at consolidations because you see that now I've added the parameter for entity and you see that I am filtering three separate entities. Now I'm consolidating all of those entities into one single report, right? I'm not separating them out, but never fear. If I want to filter out my, my companies, I can do that by column, by row, by tree, really any way that I want to. And I'll show you those examples in a second. <clears throat> so here what you also notice is that aside from companies and having the ability to, to, to select my companies, right, um, I also have the ability to go in and, and choose a budget scenario. So in budget scenario, it's <clears throat> is, am I going to do a budget or am I going to do a forecast or how does, you know, what's, what's my preference here? What am I going to be running um, as part of my report? Well, you can see that in this column I. Hi, Mike. Yes. Using you. We seem to be losing audio uh, for, for a few seconds there. Hey, do you have yeah, me back audio now? Audio seems to be lagging a little bit. Uh -huh. Do you have me now? You can hear me okay now? Maybe we can uh, start back from the entity portion, I guess, when you, you mentioned that you've got three entities. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> So like I mentioned, I have three entities here. So I've added the parameter for entity. So now I'm filtering entities and I can I can choose these entities as I want, very similar to how I would choose accounts, right? So if I'm in my entities, and I'll just expand this up so you can see this. And I say, well, I'd like to use, I'd like to not see Singapore, but I want to see Canada and I don't want Malaysia either. Right? I can select these however I want to, to be able to run them but they're consolidating them all into one report. So uh, this is just the first step in consolidations, right? But they're all consolidated. I will show you consolidations by putting my companies in columns and rows and trees, however you want to do that. I'll show you some examples. So this report, as you know, is off the data warehouse. I can do all the same things if I want to drill down. Now you notice that I have multiple drill downs. I have the general ledger, plus I have general ledger detail, plus two pivot tables. So remember, these are definable by the person that builds the report. Here you start to see other, you know, stuff like my currencies, um, et cetera, et cetera, and all the data that's associated with that. So I can do all the same stuff. The tool itself doesn't change. It's just the data source that's changed and all the data that's associated with it. Uh, so I can do everything that you saw before, and here I'll, I'll shrink this down so you can see this report a little bit better. <clears throat> and 
what you notice about this report too is now I'm filtering a whole lot more information where before I was filtering month to date and year to date, now I've got actual month, actual month last year, budget month, you know, actual year to date current year, actual year to date last year. So you, you get it, I can filter this however I want. So although the report has a similar feel because it's got graphs, I'm filtering considerably different in, uh, information, right? And what you'll also know is I, if I scroll through the body of this report, I also have expansion groups at the account level or the department level. So why would I do this? Well, because I want to condense the report, but I'd also like to have a little bit more detail behind it, right? So to just to shorten up my report, um, and I, if I just want to drill into those particular departments, I can do that. Uh, you'll also notice if I scroll down to the bottom here that I can add information and report on it that has nothing to do with financial numbers. I've got headcount or, um, you know, um, here I've got my headcount or square footage or anything along those lines that's um, that's non-financial, um, statistical information, I can add into the report as well. So opening this, the report designer back up, just want to quickly show you this because um, just so that you know this when I talk about the data warehouses, the difference now is that I have data across my entire organization. So you remember in the architecture, my HR payroll solution could be that third party um, HR payroll solution that I have outside of SAP B1. Um, it could be that I'm reporting on Google Analytics. Maybe I wanna compare my analytics data with my revenue. Um, really could be anything, my CRM, but this is all the data across my organization and the way that the reports are built here is exactly the same way that you saw before. If I open up my, my general ledger, I have my account, I drag my account in, I wanna drag the account description in, it's an attribute of account, you know, really fast, right? Very, very fast to query this, this data and be able to build this report, okay? So that's a little bit on the data warehouse. Now I'm gonna speed it up a little bit, <clears throat> a little less talk about how the product works and just show you a few um, examples. So one of the things that I know Davinder wanted to make sure that I showed you today, which is a very cool report and it's, it's always worth showing because it demonstrates a whole lot of stuff. Okay, so this is called a narrative report or what we will we'll call a narrative report. Um, and what it has in it, it's got pre-built drivers that will allow us to um, determine things like, if you see the body of this report, it says the profitability this month was moderate. Moderate is a driver, but that's a default. So um, you, I'm the person that decides, you know, good, bad, excellent, poor, whatever that might be in terms of the language that will be populated based on the results that I return from my query. So that, that's the first thing. So let me, let me cover through this. So the entity description's not here, sees moderate again, default. Um, the period's not defined because I haven't selected that information yet. If I go through the body of the report, it says, the profitability this month was moderate, the numbers aren't populated, the graphs aren't pop populated, and even language is not populated because the language will be written in some cases based on the, the information that I return, right? So I've selected this for my US company, I've selected the budget scenario and the period, um, and I'm gonna run this report. <clears throat> While I'm running it, right, this is querying a whole lot of data, right? And, and why is it querying a whole lot of data? Because it's querying the company that I selected, <clears throat> the, the scenario, the budget scenario, and the period. So it took 10 seconds, but it's also running every single one of these reports is, is reliant on the data that's returned from my query. So here you see US, right? So it's populated. The United States sees great improvement. Remember, I determined what's good and great. In September revenues, I ran it for September of 2015. The profitability this month was great. My numbers are populated. My graphs are populated. Additional language is populated and so on and so on and so on, right? So I can go through the body of this report, um, but I can also go through the other reports. So just to give you a little bit more real estate, I'll shut that down. So here, if you wanna do KPI dashboards, right? Excel type dashboards, you can do those, right? Um, all returning the information that I that I um, queried. A PL variance, yet another look at a PL variance, right? So querying different information. Again, if you don't like it, change it, right? So here's one thing that I'll point out in this PL variance. For those of you that always struggle with multiple year reporting, you're only limited um, by the number of years that you have with inside of BI360. That's it. So if I have 10 years worth of data inside of BI360, I can report on all of it. And it doesn't matter where that data is, if we bring it into the data warehouse, 
you can report on it. So here you see aggregated totals for 2014 and 2015, but if I expand a group, I can see the individual periods. Now, I'm only seeing up until September because remember, that was what I queried, was this is uh, year, to, year to date up to September. So cash flow is, is part of this. So if I'm doing a, a board report or an investor report or management report, I can decide what reports I include in here. It's completely up to me. So I've got a cash flow. You don't like this cash flow? No problem. I have probably 30 other examples of the cash flow, including cash flow forecasts where I'm changing percentages or dollar amounts, right? And adding notes as part of my meeting, <clears throat> all of which can be stored back to the data warehouse. So balance sheet, right? Again, I've got a whole bunch of examples of balance sheets. Uh, if you want to do revenue dashboards or any type of Excel-based um, dashboards, you want to see your top customer transactions and drill through to any of this data or your vendor payments, any of that type of data, it's all available for you to do within, within BI360. So moving to another topic that I know will be something uh, some of you will be be um, dealing with it that you'd like to see a little bit better solution talk a little bit more about consolidations now i'm not i don't have enough time to dive into consolidations right i've got 10 minutes left but i am going to show you um, some consolidation examples so i want to start off by showing you a report that is um, really quite cool and it's going to help demonstrate the power of bi360 within excel and let me show you why so Within my, within my company selection, um, I have selected three companies, right? Malaysia, Canada, and the US. So I've got three companies selected, but I've only got one column for my entity description. And this is gonna put each of my companies in a separate column. This is what we call dynamic expansion. If I have one company or 10 companies, it's gonna expand this report. And this is kind of what Davinder talked about earlier. It's gonna expand this report accordingly. So again, I've made my selection, I run the report, and you will see that my, here, and I'll shrink this down again, or shut this down so you can see more of this. You can see that each of my companies are now in columns. And you also can see kind of the, the start of, you know, more of the consolidation process, because I have an elimination column in here as well. And obviously, I have other audit reports that I can run for elimination to make sure that I'm, my transactions are balancing. But here, obviously, um, I have something that I, I need to attend to, right? I've got a $50,000 um, uh, elimination here that's out of balance. Then I also added a consolidated um, row, uh, or column, excuse me, to consolidate each of my companies. If I wanted to consolidate each of these companies in a separate currency, no problem. If I want to drill down to all this detail, no problem. I mean, you guys are starting to get it, right? Um, I can really build the reports the way that I want to. So let me show you one of my favorite things, which is trees. So, which, can you hear me okay, Davinder? I'm getting an audio out again. Yeah, I'm sorry, no, I just uh, I just unmuted myself because you started lagging off, so I just wanted to uh, let you know, maybe we'll have to wait for a second or so to catch up. Okay, you can hear me okay though now? Uh, yes, I can. Okay, great. Uh, and I uh, Lena mentioned that we should be okay as well now. Okay, great. So um, this is what I what I said is this is um, I'm showing you trees, which is one of my favorite things. So here you see a P&L variant. So if you're a company that's ever had to struggle with building a lot of different um, reports because you have different entities or structures or projects or anything, you're going to love this because this is one report, right? This is a P&L variance report. I built it one time, but I added trees, the parameter of trees, which takes me 20 seconds to add, and it dynamically changes the way this report works. So here you see I have two trees. I have a, uh, a geographical tree, and I'll expand this up. So you see my Asia Pacific region, and you see my North America region, right? So if I said I wanna run this for Asia Pacific, I just simply click it at that level, one report and it's gonna run this report. And what I've asked it to do, I could have put the results in separate columns, but what I asked it to do was to bring back the results and put them into separate tabs. So you see I have three tabs here. So Asia Pacific represents a, um, a consolidation level. So I'm consolidating Malaysia and Singapore at the Asia Pacific level. And then I have the individual results for Malaysia and for Singapore on separate tabs. I built one report.
But if I just said, hey, yeah, just, just show me Malaysia. I just want to go see my Malaysia company, right? I've only got a couple of companies in here, but if you got 50 companies, 100 companies, no problem. You can do the, exactly the same thing. And here you see just my Malaysia results. And another quick idea for you is if you're if you're doing things like lines of business, you've ever struggled and you say, I'd like to see, you know, all my manufacturing companies versus my distribution companies or whatever it is, whatever your industry is, all this is definable. I can say, show me all my manufacturing companies. Right. And I can define those man those companies within the tree as manufacturing companies. Still, again, one report. And I can I can do this at whatever level, as many structures as I want, and I only ever built one report. It's just querying back different data, and I can select within the tree to be able to, to run it at whatever level I want. And here are my manufacturing companies, okay? So very cool stuff. So with that, I'm gonna change gears a little bit. <clears throat> I am going to go out to the web portal, the BI360 web portal, and I'm going to expand this up so everyone can see it a little bit better. And go to meaning does kind of condense it a little bit, makes it a little bit uh, weird to see. So hopefully everybody can see this this correctly. Um, what I will what I will tell you is that I logged in already with my username and password. This is a shared model that goes. It's a globally shared model with our partners and our customers, and um, it's for the you know for corporate examples. So. What I'm looking at now is I'm looking at this in a carousel mode. So here are some examples of dashboards within my corporate model. And if you are in a, in a particular vertical, um, healthcare, finance, um, education, um, retail, you know, distribution, whatever it might be that you're, you're into, we even have professional sports teams. We have over 20 models that are available just like this, but built for specific industries. OK, so if you want to see um, more detail at a later date, um, certainly we can show you verticals that are, are more uh, related to your your business. So what you're seeing now is dashboards. I'm just flipping through dashboards. You'll notice over here on the left, I'm looking at my favorites, but I could select all. I could also change the view if I wanted to. I could um, say, you know, show me a thumbnail view, which I could scroll through or a little bit more detailed thumbnail. Um, but I kind of like the carousel view. Uh, so I'm right back into the carousel. You'll notice that I have um, folders over here. These are all definable. So if you want to say, here's my financial reports, my, my payroll reports, my dashboards, whatever it might be, you can define these um, at, for your company and for your users specifically. OK. So um, let me just kind of point out all these things that you're looking at here on the right hand side, they're all different kinds of reports. So you see all the different kinds of reports that we have examples, right? Sales reports, you get it, you can build whatever you want. So this report might look familiar to you. This was the first BI 360 data warehouse report that I ran. So if I, if I, I see, I get a visual prompt, right? A snapshot of the report. So I just ran the report. Now I selected that report. And it brings up the report and all the information. <clears throat> so let me tell you what, what this is. This is exactly that report that I showed you earlier. I can reference previous times that I've ran the report and reflect to those you know, on the fly. So if I said, show me this report at Friday at 1027 AM, I can go and reflect to the numbers that the last time I ran that report or when I ran that report on Friday at 1027 AM. Um, I also see the data source. I also have my parameters. So if I want to go and change the company like you saw in Excel, I can do all of the same stuff as a user that I could do inside of Excel. I don't lose any of that functionality, only I don't have the ribbon and I'm not in Excel. If I want to download this report to, to Excel, very easy to do. And you'll say, well, why would I want to download it to Excel? Well, maybe I want to run my own calculation on the numbers, right? Um, because I can't change these or affect these numbers at all, right? It's coming from the system. Um, so one one reason, and it does, if you download it to Excel, auto formatting, auto formulation, everything happens um, automatically. If I want to expand the view so I can see more of the report, if I want to drill down into the report, all these things that you saw before, I have the ability to do as a user from the web portal, right? Same exact report. Okay. And it goes with every report that you want to build, that you want to view or see. So you can't build any reports in here. So I, I meant to say that you want to run. Um, if I wanted to go into, uh, let's say, consolidations, right? For some of you that have, uh, have an interest in consolidations, I can also go 
in and run consolidation reports. So here you see a bunch of adjustment forms and consolidation reports, right? Every type of report that you can think of. And here's one where it's going to do expansion across the columns so that you can see that I have all that same functionality as a user um, within the BI 360 web portal. So here you see I've got a, that same report before consolidating year to, year to date net income with the companies that I ran it for. And my, in this case, my, my minority interest elimination is here and my inner company elimination is here. And I can shrink those down with the, or collapse those um, with, the, uh, with the expansion group, all right? So same exact type of report. I don't lose any of that functionality. So <clears throat> the next thing that I'll talk to you about kind of in closing is, well, I'm actually gonna show you one other thing other than um, budgeting, but let me show you um, budgeting from a submitter perspective couple of minutes. So here you see a lot of different budget uh, examples, right? Assumptions, which is a driver template, personnel, you know, travel, right? You're not forced to use these templates. These are just examples, right? You design them however you want within BI 360 so that you can have the budget and forecast templates ex that are specific to your, your business. So if I open up other expenses, <clears throat> You will see this looks an awful lot like a report, right? I can reference previous times that I ran it. I can change parameters. You know, it's, it looks just like a report. Remember, I said the two same tools. The, the two tools are the same, except for within budgeting, you're going to be storing back data. So why would I have all these parameters? Well, have you ever been on the financial side and you know, being the finance manager, and you wanna, you need to edit or adjust or contribute to somebody else's budget? and you have to go back and find the budget version in Excel and what folder that was in, and all that stuff goes away, right? All I have to do is change what company it is, what department it was, what period it was, and I can go in and make contributions, right? But for your typical contributor, this is the more advanced view, your typical contributor is probably just gonna have department. Maybe they have two departments, so they contribute to department 100, save it, submit it, change the department to 200, and, and go through that process again. Well, let me make this really simple for you. You can pass these budgets out to your contributors with everything already predefined, the company, the period, everything, and all they have to do is enter in data. So it would look something like this. So they could come in here and say, uh, let's go into telephone. So I go into telephone and I say, I'm gonna do $7,000 telephone expense. I'm gonna drag, oops, I'm gonna drag that across the rest of the year. And I'm gonna change March to 8,000 and I'm gonna change June to 9,000, right? And I could just be at that level, account level, and just say save or submit, which we have grayed out. Um, save means I'm coming back later. Submit means I've submitted it. I can't make any more changes. It's in the in the budget approval process. So quite easy to do. A couple of other quick things. Um, I can also just come back in here and open up um, a spreadsheet, uh, which will allow me, or a spreader bar, which will allow me to do a spread. So here you see my current contribution. Here you see last year's actuals. I can go in and say, let's wipe that out. Let's make this zero. I'm gonna apply in last year's history. You also see seasonality as well, all definable. And I say apply, and now I've got exactly last year's actuals. I can go and increase it by 8%, apply, save, and I'm done. One last thing here is I can also do um, line item details. So here I've got a couple of line items, but very easy for me to go and add another line and just say, you know, whatever, what is this? This is a conference and seminars. So I can say banners, right? And go in and enter enter my data in at the, at the month level, right? And I can also enter in comments as you see here, conference in Atlanta, right? Once that's done, I can say, okay. And that's gonna all roll up into that. And that's what those borders mean is that there's line item detail. If you want to change it to it being another color or something, fantastic, you can do that. So uh, so um, the last last thing I'll just talk to you about here is directions. These are demonstrate demonstration instructions, but if you want to have step-by-step -step instructions to your users, you can do that. Um, policies, procedures, whatever you might want to do. The other thing is you can also uh, show actuals or include actuals in this. I can't, blue means I can't change, yellow means that's where I contribute. So if you wanna include actuals for people to reference 
or if you wanted to include another um, budget template, in this case, this is the payroll budget for people to reference as well as part of that. As part of that, again, you can't change. You can do that. Uh, really, any type of budget or forecast template that you want to you want to build, rolling rolling forecast, spread forecast, any type of budgets with drivers, um, we can do all of that. And I know I didn't have a whole lot of time to show you this, uh, so that. That's really the BI360 demonstration, excluding one last component that I know that I'd be in a whole lot of trouble if I didn't show it today. Uh, this is the BI360, uh, just yet another tool within BI360. This is the BI360 um, ad hoc query tool. We call it Composer. This shares, this is, BI, this is SAP B1. This is live, out of the box. On, it, you, you install this. It shows all of your data across all of your modules. It's the same exact integration as the Excel formatted tool you just saw. I'm gonna show you this really quickly. So I'm in finance, um, on the financial side, I'm gonna scroll this down and I'm going to expand my journal transactions row. Uh, I'm gonna just show you how to build something really quickly. So I can expand. Okay. Yep. Mike, uh, I was just gonna jump in and say that uh, I also have some material that will cover this. So perhaps we can, uh, um, we can follow up on this and I will actually cover the, um, the composer actually. Okay. So that will take some time as well. Yep, okay, so I'll turn it over to you then. Okay. Let me let me reassign this back over to you. And okay. I know I ran a little bit long, and I do apologize. There's just a lot to show. But uh, thank you very much, sure, Tadner, no for having me here to show this. Here you go. You're now the presenter. All right. So I'm going to show my screen back again. And uh, again, I'm going to go into presentation mode. So again, thank you as well, Mike for uh, running through the BI360 suite. What I've done is that I've just um, cut that one slide that Mike had uh, very briefly, just so that everyone comes back to the same page. Uh, what Mike has shared was the reporting tool, which sits in Excel, the planning or budgeting tool, which is where you punch in information and get uh, approvals as well. And I know uh, Mike also spent some time to look at the um, web and dashboards tool. We spoke about the data warehouse, which is, allows you to consolidate multiple sets of data together. And I quite like the ability to actually create additional trees, and those trees can actually expand according to your business needs as well. So um, that, was, uh, that was just a brief recap of, uh, of what Mike has shared. Now, not to take up too much of your time, I think uh, we have about, say, 10, 10 minutes, 10 minutes plus before we quickly wrap up. So. Um, I'll continue with my portion, which is uh, aptly named, Are You Ready to Digitize Your Business? So again, please do feel free to uh, send us your questions if you do have them, and we'll unmute everyone at the end of this session um, in order to follow up on it. So looking at digitizing your business, uh, what we've done is that we've actually collected some data and we've put it together in a, in a pie chart. And we kind of have some numbers here. We have about 41% of someone's time in a business doing business activity, 41% of the time looking at reducing spending, improving efficiency, 33-odd percent looking at new markets to go to market to sell the solutions, services, and products that you, our clients, have. New innovations takes up about 16% of your time in business activities, and customer retention and I think this is quite important um, currently in the economic climate, looking at customer retention. Now, all of this information that we have leads us to one um, key point. We're looking at business software, and we're looking at reporting and gaining insights on these data. So when we say gaining insights, the idea here is that we want to be able to make use of all available data so that we can make quick and efficient decisions based on that information. So I may have a lot of sales information, I may have a lot of orders, I may have a lot of HR data, CRM data, but how do we actually make use of this data? How do we digitize this data as well? So a little bit to what uh, we alluded earlier on, there's a little bit of a present here that we've actually worked on with Solver. So for the digitize your business, what we will be doing um, along with Solver is that we are gonna be looking at offering the BI Composer for free of charge 
up to 20 users for all our customers as well as uh, the team members and, and attendees in today's webinar. So what is that 5,000 composer, 35 US dollars in a uh, million? We're actually going to be giving away up to 20 users for VI360 composer up to about 7,788 US dollars in value. So this is something that we've put together and uh, of course terms and conditions apply but it is targeted till year end and uh, this will allow you to look at that last tool that Mike was sharing and in fact I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump into a very short demo briefly after this but just for your info what is the BI360 Composer? It's a standalone module, it sits in the BI360 suite uh, it allows you to do ad hoc reporting, very similar to what Mike has shared in Excel, and it allows you to drill down into GL and sub-ledgers. And here, what we're going to do is that we're going to be looking at putting in 20 user licenses. Now, FYI, most of our clients are running SAP Business One, but this integration actually supports other live ERP solutions as well, for example, GP, NAV, etc. And of course, we can also work on additional um, functionality if need be. So it's something quite exciting. We are quite excited about it. Uh, uh, the solver to us, it's, uh, it's quite a big value, especially looking at the USD. Uh, look at what is that BI360 composer again. So what does it allow you to do? It allows you data warehouse if it's console. and it helps you build those reports that you rightfully need and it can then allow you to create a templatized system in order for you to actually act on. Okay. okay. So what, what if you have immediate access to your data, you don't have IT people involved, you don't have to build SQL queries and I think some important points here to take note is that if you have certain values or terms that you want to use throughout your entire business and you want all 20 users, since it's 20 user license free uh, with, the, with the solver package, what you can actually do is that you can actually build these standard terms, build these standard KPIs and these terms or expressions and KPIs will then be accessed by everyone running the BI360 Composer. And of course, ultimately we want to look at reducing the complexity uh, of running your business. So this is, this is a great offer that we've actually put together. Um, I don't know if the font size is big enough. Uh, it's, it's, it's <laughs> it is quite a quite an interesting offer here. Now, what I'll do now, uh, just to share with you a little bit on on the solution itself, is that I'm going to tab into my system and I'm going to show you the BI 360 Composer overview. Um, this is the overview that I shortly paused uh, Mike from sharing. So, what I have now on my screen is the BI360 Composer. I'm just going to I'm just going to tab and check if everyone can see my screen. Yes. So we don't have any yep. lag issues and so forth. Yep, we can see it. Yep, okay. I think uh, I think we should be okay. So what we have here as shared earlier on is the BI360 Composer. On the left hand again very similar. You've got the modules and functionality that's built in. So what you're going to do is, is literally drag and drop. Um, so of course you've created some scenarios, some example scenarios. Uh, my management wants to see sales invoices by period, comparing last year's period, this year's period, and they want to sort it between sales employees. So traditionally, if you were using a query, you'd have to link a sales employee table, a customer master table, uh, an AR invoice table, etc. So we're going to do that really quickly with a couple of clicks. So I'm going to expand my sales AR, accounts receivable. And what I'm going to do is, is that I'm just going to make this a little larger. And I'm going to expand my AR invoice. So I have my business partner code. And notice that within the BI Composer, we have the ability to expand. And this is where, again, the integration and the development has been done for you. You will realize that within the customer master, there are a number of tables that are related, the territories, the ship to, the bill to, the contact details. All of this is actually exposed to you, including user-defined fields as well. So that's a key point. 
if you have user-defined fields and you want to create those kind of reports, you can easily do it in this manner. So I'm going to drag my business partner code. Now, on top of that, I mentioned I need my sales employee. So if you're familiar, if you just drag sales employee, you may get a code 010203. I don't want that. I want to have a name. So I'll drag a name. And for now, what I want is that I just want a document total. So we're going to scroll all the way down for this AR invoice table and the icons start to change. Yeah, you'll notice that it changes uh, icon values and this is quite important because that icon value will tell you that it's either a dimension or a measure. And in this case, we want to have a measure. We want to have a document total. So I'm going to drag my document total and place it in here. I've got uh, a sample of data. I'm just going to refresh very quickly. And now, now what I have is that I've got my customer. I've got my sales employee and I've got my document total and it's done that really quickly. It's um, executed it in 107 milliseconds. So let's make it a little bit more complicated. Let's go ahead and say I want to have um, the period ID. I'm going to refresh that as well. So now I've got my period ID, but the period ID in SAP Business One doesn't quite make sense. So what I want is that I want to have a financial year and I just, I'm just going to take away period ID instead, and I'll refresh that. So now I've got my financial year. If I want to sort financial years or filter financial years, I can select that. And this lookup will then access SAP Business One since this is a live report. And I can select multiple periods if need be. So I'll select multiple periods. I'll refresh my data, and I can look at that. If I want to do grouping, that's quite straightforward as well. What I'll do is that I'll just drag my employee ID. Uh, sorry. That's my code, that's my name. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add uh, my employee name here and I'll refresh that data again. So I have similar information. I can view that sum column if I want to. And there's a pretty cool trick here. You can actually right click on certain values and you can expand them in columnar format so that if you need something that looks like a cross tab, you can also look at it in a cross tab format. So you do have the ability to interact with your data. You can actually interact with the information that needs to do that as well. And if you want to take it further, as uh, Mike did share earlier on, we also do have functions that have been pre-built within the Report Composer. So we regularly hear people asking, can you show me uh, sales moving backwards three months or sales moving forward three months or Q1 this year, Q2 this year, so what we can do is that we can actually put Q1 numbers within it, right? And if I want to, I can actually continue to create Q1, Q2, Q3 numbers by adding those document totals that I need to. So I'm just going to add another document total. And I'm going to do similar. I'm going to go to functions and I'm going to say Q2. And I'm going to refresh that data. And depending on the health and quantity of that data, I'm going to be able to see my sales figures based on financial year, if I want to, financial year here. I can actually look at one, uh, uh, Q1, Q2, Q3. And in this case, I can actually just say, let's just look at 2017, and I can refresh that. So these are functionalities that are already readily available within the BI360 Composer tool. Now, you can also create your own values. For example, you can actually create what we term as an expression. So an expression is just something where we pre-compute a value and we save it within the system so that any user that is accessing the system can use that expression. So let's say we are running some, uh, we are a training company. So we've got training cost of goods sold and we've got training income. Now I don't want my users to manually edit the training values. So what I can do is that I can actually go in and I can actually tell uh, the report composer, in this case, the BI360 composer, that my training cost of goods sold originates from this GL code in SAP Business One, which is 510400. I can do a lookup, and it's going to connect to my SAP Business One, and in this case, I called up training cost paid, and this is my cost of goods sold for training. And if I want to, I can actually do training income as well, and in this case, I've got a special GL code in SAP Business One called training revenue. And I can tab out and show you SAP B1 if need be as well, or any other solution that you may be using. 
now that I have got training cost of uh, goods sold and training income, I can actually add this into any report from a financial perspective. So if someone says, let's have training COGS compared against income and look at what is the revenue, I can do that. And more importantly, if I need to, I can also include that into what we call a KPI. So I've pre-built a KPI. Um, actually, I've, I did it this morning. So what I've done is that I've actually created a KPI called training gross margin. So if I need to, I can actually create a new report. I can drag the training gross margin and I can refresh. So what this is basically is that it's the ability to look at my, um, my training revenue minus my training cost of goods sold divided by my training revenue and I can actually see what my gross margin is. So if I need to, I can actually go back to my function and I can actually look at this year if I need to and I can execute it as well. Now, depending on the values that I have, if I have got one year, two years, three years worth of values, I can actually KPI that uh, through this solution itself. So again, I don't want to take up too much time because um, if need be, what we can do is that we can arrange a one-on-one -on -one session to go through this BI360 Composer to share with you the very attractive offer that we have. So I'm just going to go back to PowerPoint. I'm going to flash this up one more time. Yeah, so we're giving away up to 20 user licenses for the BI360 Composer. And the Composer tool was that solution um, that I just briefly showed you. Okay, so what we have next is, let me just move forward. We have some Q&A and FAQ. So I think it's coming up to almost, um, coming up to almost 11.30. So uh, let's take some Q&A if there are any questions. Um, let me just come out from here. Um, Mike, should we unmute everyone for the Q&A? We'll do. If there are any Q&A? Everyone is unmuted. Okay. So um, just again to realign what we briefly spoke about, uh, you know, we've we worked with the Solver team. We've showcased the BI 360 uh, suite. And later on after that, I showcased the BI 360 Composer a very attractive offer on, uh, on on that composer package right now. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm just wondering if we have any questions that need to be clarified. Um, also, do take note that we will be reaching out to you personally on a one-on-one -on -one basis, so we can actually sit down. We will be sharing these slides as well in a link later on today when we get to coordinate ourselves. Um, yeah. So. Any, any questions currently? Or maybe what I can also do is that while we're waiting for questions, let me just uh, flash out some FAQs, which ERPs are integrated out of the box for the BI360, currently SAP Business One, and some of those other solutions. Again, just as a reference point, just the BI360 report on non-standard fields, example, user-defined fields. And uh, the, the simple answer is yes. Yeah, so those fields that are part of SAP Business One, in this case, user-defined fields or other non-standard fields, you will be able to actually report on them. I think sometimes um, we kind of forget that since it's running in Excel, what versions of Excel are supported? At this stage, is Excel 2007 and newer. For your info, I'm actually running um, Excel 365 but I'm running the offline version, which is downloaded to my PC. It's not the cloud version because we need to interact with the data. So in this case, of course, you will need something installed on your PC. And, uh, of, of, you know, I think we flashed out a table that showed a number of components for the BI360, the modules. And uh, I think it will be a quite a common question. Say, should I, should I buy every module or should I just buy per module and later put it together again? So yes, you know, you don't have to buy the whole suite. You can buy the whole suite if you look at um, your requirements in terms of, let's say, you have multiple company reporting, then of course you will have to look at the data warehousing component. But if you want to do reporting, ad hoc reporting, etc., you can actually buy um, the Excel portion as well. So, okay, I'm just going to go back to the FAQ and I'm just going to pull up chat to see if uh, we have any questions so far. Um, Lena, any any questions that may have been directed to your end, uh, please do let us know as well.
Okay, so um, I think Lena just mentioned that uh, she doesn't really have any questions that have been forwarded. Um, again, I would like to say thank you. Thank you to everyone who's actually taken the time off to come in and uh, sit in on a webinar. Thank you as well to the Solver team to arrange this session. I think it's quite fruitful. Uh, as I shared again, oh, sorry, before I forget, Lena has politely reminded me. Um, we do have a survey that we need to send out as well. And we will be sending this survey out via email. Um, the idea of the survey is just to understand whether or not we've touched on a topic or a subject that is uh, meaningful, that gives you some, uh, some business insight. And, uh, and following that, what we'll do is that we'll actually come back to you personally in terms of all those uh, questions that may have come up. So if there's no, no questions for now, um, I guess, Mike, anything on your end, anything on Scott's end? No, thank you very much for having us today. I appreciate it. Thanks for everyone's time. All right, fantastic. Thank you, everyone, again. And uh, we'll call this, this webinar session to an end then. Thank you again.